Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Qasim Muhammad Ali. I'm the director of Worldwide Somali Students and Professionals, uh, WSSP. And we have today Franz Salassin, who is from IOM, and he is the manager of uh, MIDA uh, program Somalia. Mm -hmm. Franz, welcome. Thank you, Qasim, uh, for the warm welcome and the introduction. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here today uh, to discuss with you um, uh, what we're doing in Somalia and uh, to, to also give the audience uh, um, a view of what uh, WSSB and IOM are doing together um, uh, to find uh, the qualified candidates to help rebuild Somalia. So thank you once again. Thank you. As you know, WSSB have been working on a um, project and also getting Somali professionals to go back home. Mm -hmm. We have done the first stage where we have sent back people back home for free, but now we've managed to get um, IOM media program on board. Mm -hmm. So we're asking our fellows, our friends, or you know Somalis who are qualified to go back to Somalia and help institutional building of Somalia. So could you bit, uh, tell us a bit more about the program and institutional building, capacity building that you are managing now? As you may uh, know, well, it, uh, the audience here may recall Quest Media was our flagship program. This is what we started with in uh, Somalia. And uh, we've, we continue to expand uh, on the process. Of course, we have learned quite a bit from, 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 from the initial implementation of uh, Quest Media. And we have uh, actually managed to, to, to change and, and, and made it better. And specifically because of the comments that we got, because of the conversation we've had with the Somali diaspora in various countries such as the UK, um, uh, our improvement, uh, the um, uh, improvement of, 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 of this program and the recalibration of it is due to uh, the active participant of, of the Somali uh, uh, diaspora from, from various town hall meetings and various conversations we've had with them and also because of uh, uh, organizations such as WSSP providing guidance uh, to IOM and the media program. This program was designed to assist the uh, uh, Somali government authorities in Puntland, Somaliland and also in South Central Somalia to uh, find uh, in, 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 uh, uh, the necessary qualified uh, candidates to, to, to build the human resource capacity of, of those uh, um, governments. We now uh, uh, have a close relationship with a lot of ministries and, and, and institutions that allows us to, 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 to provide the support to the government. You know, uh, as you know, Kasim, uh, uh, the UK has a very vibrant uh, Somali community. I, I have seen this uh, fervor uh, coming and, and this is why the majority of uh, of our applicants come from the UK. It's it's due to um, people like you yourself, organization like yourself, partnering with IOM, and and this is why we want to go where where we find the Somali community to 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 give them the extra push. Um, we will uh, have the face to face conversation with our, our various partners in these cities to, to, to show our commitment yeah. to what uh, we said we're going to do yeah. and then to answer their questions face to face yeah, and, and uh, in some cases to uh, mis dispel any misconception that might be out there about the Absolutely. program. So I find it necessary to have a face to face conversation every time and whenever we can and having you on board, having WSSP as a reliable partner will allow us to actually do this, send out our message and have the conversation and answer the questions honestly up front. So we come in Bristol. You mentioned you, we have uh, programs with uh, uh, or partnership IOM has with uh, Somali ministers. One of the programs that we advertised was the uh, Minister of Planning and International yeah. Cooperation. Um, led by Minister Ente, His Excellency. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us a bit more the ministries that you work with or IOM works with and the institution capacity buildings that you provide for uh, specific ministries? Right. So uh, we, we have some key sectors that we're addressing. Um, we, we work on public finance management. Yeah. We work on health, education and justice sector reform. Of course, we, we have we have provides uh, we provide support 
to um, on disaster management, disaster relief. So in that sense, we work with ministries of uh, education, ministries of finance, ministries of planning. Uh, we work ministries of interior. Uh, and what we provide to these ministries is based on their needs. One thing about MEDA, uh, it's a demand-driven program. Uh, we don't impose any uh, program or particular sectoral approach mm. on the ministries. It's based on their needs and they make their requests. In fact, while we have a, a TOR template, it's a, it's a terms of reference template, yeah. uh, it's the ministries that fill them out with the required experience, okay. yeah. with the required qualification, okay. the educational background, and the specific task they want that person to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we provide the support within uh, the, the, the overall approach, within our overall f uh, strategic framework, which is plugged then in into the, 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 the New Deal and the PSGs yeah. with the various uh, um, goals. Uh, and, and, and so um, we're following basically what the government is telling you. Yes. Oh, so the, the, the strategic plans and, and the, the specific uh, 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 work plan that the that the, the, the ins that any giving uh, institution may have. Okay. Um, one of the reasons that our followers or our members WSSB that is asking was uh, the number of experience, the number of years of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the people said, you know, what well, we don't have ten or twenty years experience. And we have young professionals around right. the world. We have doctors, engineers, civil servants, geologists, biomedical scientists, nurses. Mm -hmm. And if ministry is asking for uh, 10 to 20 years experience, that means they are looking for a specific number of people rather than uh, to make use of some other professionals. So what would you do about, or what ministries would do about um, uh, the number of experience, number of years experience? Right. I, I mean, that's a f that's a fair question. Um, what what we actually do, and yes, the, mini the ministry's request specific person is based on the need, and what uh, not specific person, but specific um, uh, terms of reference yeah. or s specific numbers of years and background of experience. Yeah, uh, it's based on what they think they need at the time. Yeah, uh, if it's not realistic, we can advise the ministry, or uh, and if it's not realistic, then we we can craft it in a bit. But I can understand the point. I can appreciate uh, um, what somebody who has uh, two or three years of experience and they do want to participate, of course, who want to get involved in. So I think it's it's important to to marry the enthusiasm of of the youth with the experience of of, of the much older persons yeah. to get a, a combination. We we should not leave anybody out. Uh, we should we should make sure that we get the, the quali qualified candidates, uh, some good quality applicants, and then uh, and, and, and get also the inject some some enthusiasm, and energy, and, and energy and into into the process. Absolutely. Um, I wish to ask you about the uh, process. Mm -hmm. One one applies for the jobs. What kind of a process? What different phases, stages that uh, people go through, and what's the time scale for that? Right, that's a very good question, uh, because uh, it, it 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 says a lot about how how we actually respond yeah. to the needs of, of the institutions. Yeah. So it, there there is a combination of factors that involve in in getting uh, um, a person on the ground from from the time we advertise the position yeah. to the time uh, uh, we put that person on the ground. Uh, in most cases, we can start from the time the request is made okay. to the time we place we place the person on the ground, yeah. and that's a key factor. Why? Because um, when uh, a ministry makes a request, yeah. uh, we send them the terms of reference. Yeah. We look at it. Sometimes uh, the the goals, the what we see, the terms of reference has to be a smart uh, terms of reference. Yeah, of so we have to be able to measure the impact that person is going to have. Sometimes we may have questions and go back and forth to the ministry, so that can delay the process. Um, so once the, the position is advertised, we yeah. usually advertise them for two weeks. For two weeks, okay. yes. And and then, depending on the number of applicants, it can take at least another week to shortlist them. Yeah. And 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 in most cases, we actually do the shortlisting ourselves. Okay. In some cases, we do it with the ministry. 
Okay. And the way it works, um, sometimes we have partner agencies that work with us. Okay. So we, you have a three agency or three entity panel. Okay. Um, and because you know you may have uh, a ministry in Hagesa, and then we is somebody in Nairobi, and uh, uh, another agency in Nairobi. So what we would do, you'd send your top four candidate. Okay. If so you shortlist four people. Four right. You, 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 as, as the ministry, okay. you shortlist your own candidate. Yeah. I shortlist my candidate. Okay. You shortlist this candidate. Okay. In so most cases, okay. IRM does it. Okay. We, we do it ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if, if one, if any of these candidates find itself, him or herself, uh, shortlisted by all three agencies, that person is automatically shortlisted. Okay. We usually interview at least uh, uh, three candidates. Yeah. Sometimes we may go less, but in, in most cases it's three candidates. Okay. So once we the shortlisting is done and is acceptable to the ministry because yeah. they have to actually verify them. If, if it's acceptable to the ministry, then they tell us, okay, we accept those three uh, or four candidates. Go ahead with the interview. Yeah. So now it's coordinating between us, the ministry, and the, the potential candidates. Yeah. So you have now, uh, sometimes we, we lose a lot of time in that process. Because if you send an email to, to the designee of the ministry, you say, yeah. okay, I'd like to hold the interviews on these, these dates. They say, no, I'm out of country. Can you hold it this? Yeah. And then that so happened to be the IOM staff is also out of country. Yeah. And then you can lose a lot of time. And so we have also the candidate's time to consider. So this is when we usually lose a lot of time because the two weeks is set. We know we're going to advertise it for two weeks. Okay. Uh, well, the next step is to draft the interview notes. Okay. So everybody involved in the panel has to sign it, saying candidate number one is the person. And the other thing we do, we don't put names on the on the CVs. Okay. We put candidate number one, candidate number three, candidate number four, five, six, seven. Yeah. If we do a long list, we'll put the number as long as the list is. Okay. Uh, so, to avoid any preferences. Yeah. So, the persons on the panel, unless they have that the other person's CV directly in front yeah. of them, would yeah. not know who yeah, they are interviewing. Absolutely. Yeah? It's to avoid any preferences. So, how was the length of from the day you start applying for the job and the day you actually land on the job? Is it one month, two months, three months, four? What is it exactly? I would say in the last year or so the average is two months two months okay yeah so so once so you have the time. interview notes everybody signs it yeah we make an offer to the to the selected candidate can you tell us a bit more what is the plan for i own or media project in somalia for the next two or three years because some people suggest that this is almost becoming an agency job where people are applying for a job and going and coming back again but that will that be the process for a long time or will it be some sort of another programs where media is also concentrating or giving attention to it, uh, like job creation? And I ask you this question because some people say that the yes, well, going back to Somalia uh, are not really helping out that much within the country or within the locals. And the locals feel a bit more that they're taking off the jobs and so on. So are you, is media or IOM in general um, doing on some programs that uh, really job creation, wealth creation, right. and and helping people in Somalia rather than those who are going uh, from the diaspora to go back to Somalia. Right. That's that's a that's a really good question. The average contract when we issued them yeah. is one year, but of course it, it, with the possibility of yeah. of renewal, yeah. And many people have been renewed, and and I know uh, I've been managing this project for two and a half years and there were people before me yeah they are they are guys that were there a year before i showed up and so they've been working for this project for the last four and a half years yeah uh, on the questions of what they deliver yeah. to the ministry and that that's that's important because um the the somali people deserve somebody who's gonna go and actually do some work somebody who's a change agent yeah, yeah? somebody who's going to be out there and make real impact on the ground. I'm sure, it, it, and, and I know IOM wants that too. It's important for what we do to have an impact. It's important yeah. for us to deliver yeah. to the Somali people yeah. and uh, to, to, to those who are paying the taxes that are giving us the funds. Uh, so, yes, 
we try we will hold people accountable if yeah. they're not doing their job this yeah. is what the reporting is about mm. and this is why it's we are required to submit a quarterly report cool. and if you don't submit it you don't get paid so uh, and the other part of the question is um, how can the, the the diaspora come in and taking the job and this is not the spirit of the of the project the spirit of the project the diaspora is a helping hand yeah yeah they're not going there to supplant, replace, or displace those who are on the ground. Mm. That's not the spirit. This mm. is, that would be, you know, the basis for conflict. And we don't want yeah. to create new conflict yeah. in the country. Uh, we, 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 we want our work to be part, uh, in a way, uh, to, 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 to contribute to the peace building efforts within Somalia. Um, so this is why the contract is finite. Yeah. Um, they go for a certain period of time and, and, and they do the job that if, if we were to, to look for it, we couldn't find it in, in, in Somalia. For every diaspora uh, candidate we place on the ground, we pair them up with two hi locally hired okay. uh, interns. Okay. So that the person can transfer the skills uh, so to the ground. Right, because we're looking at sustainability. These guys might just get up and go back to London. Yeah. Uh, or uh, Toronto. But we want them to train the people to leave their skills there mm -hmm. who will be uh, part of the uh, future of Somalia mm -hmm. and who can actually provide the next step. This program is now for UK, UK Somali professionals, right. uh, diaspora professionals. As you know, we'll be visiting uh, different cities, mm -hmm. uh, the cities like Manchester, Birmingham, Bristol, um, Cardiff, Glasgow, and Frisbee. We are now here in London. Yes. Um, what would you like to say, message to Somali professionals, those who are in uh, those cities? Um, and what would you like to tell them? Well, I'd like to tell them to participate as much as possible, as much as their commitments, uh, family, both family and work commitment allows them, uh, because it's a, it's a noble cause. I would say going back. Uh, to Somalia to build the capacity of the fellow uh, Somali government officials is a noble cause. Uh, there are a lot of um, threats against uh, people like them, but I've seen the brave men and women uh, of the Somali community have uh, time and time again going back to do what they find absolutely necessary in order to build the, the government. So I say come, I would say uh, um, I would appeal to their sense of legacy to come and, and, and join the program uh, to, to, to actually design a better tomorrow for the Somali people. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Qasim Muhammad Ali. I'm the director of Worldwide Somali Students and Professionals, uh, WSSP. And we have today Franz Salassin, who is from IOM, and he is the manager of uh, MIDA uh, program Somalia. Mm -hmm. Franz, welcome. Thank you, Qasim, uh, for the warm welcome and the introduction. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, to dis we continue to expand uh, on the process. Of course, we have learned quite a bit from, 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 from the initial implementation of uh, Quest Media, and we have uh, actually managed to, to, to change and, and, and made it better. And specifically because of the comments that we got, because of the conversation we've had with the Somali diaspora in various countries, such as the UK, um, uh, our improvement, uh, the but now we've managed to get um, IOM media program on board. Mm -hmm. So we're asking our fellows, our friends, or you know, Somalis who are qualified to go back to Somalia and help institutional building of Somalia. So could you bit, uh, tell us a bit more about the program and institutional building, capacity building that you are managing now? As you may uh, know, well, it, uh, the audience here may recall, Quest Media was our flagship program. This is what we started with in uh, Somalia. And uh, we've discussed with you um, uh, what we're doing in Somalia 
and uh, to to also give the audience uh, um, a view of what uh, WSSB and IOM are doing together um, uh, to find uh, the qualified candidates to help rebuild Somalia. So thank you once again. Thank you. As you know, WSSB have been working on a um, project and also getting Somali professionals to go back home. Mm -hmm. We have done the first stage where we have sent back people back home for free. Um, uh, improvement of, 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 of this program and the recalibration of it is due to uh, the active participant of, of the Somali uh, uh, diaspora from, from various town hall meetings and various conversations we've had with them and also because of uh, uh, organizations such as WSSP providing guidance uh, to IOM and the media program. This program was designed to assist the uh, uh, Somali